boxing has the deepest history of all organized sports. The early days were chronicled through writing, and we're now able to witness historic fights from previous centuries through videos and more. We have long pondered who would win in a matchup between the greats of the past. In today's episode, we have an all-Irish throwdown between the first recognized undisputed heavyweight champion of the world, the Boston strong boy John L. Sullivan vs. heavyweight contender, Sailor Tom, Thomas Sharkey. John L. Sullivan had a total of 41 official bouts under the Marquess of Queensbury rules, which is what all boxers compete under today. Sullivan had 38 wins, 32 by knockout, with a knockout ratio of 84%. He suffered only one defeat. He had one draw. He stood at 5 feet 10 and a half inches with an aggregate weight of 208 pounds over his career. This included a 74-inch reach. Tom Sharkey had a total of 52 official bouts. Sharkey had 37 wins, 34 by knockout, with a knockout ratio of 92%. He suffered seven defeats, four of them by knockout. He had six draws. He also had one no contest and one no decision bout. He stood at 5 feet 8 inches with an aggregate weight of 178 pounds over his career. This included a 70 and 1 half inch reach. Sullivan was the first superstar in the sport of boxing and is credited with taking boxing mainstream. Sullivan's is the last bare-knuckle champion, but he was truly a proponent for gloved fighting, the sport we know now. Sullivan was usually quick out of the gates and was the first to introduce the knockout as a regular occurrence in the sport at a mainstream level. Under the bare-knuckles rules, fights could get drawn out and often featured a lot of holding and wrestling, not to mention eye-gouging. Sullivan, for his time, represented the shift to knockouts in a manner that raised the sport of boxing to unprecedented heights. Sullivan often swarmed his opponents with a barrage of shots which usually led to early knockouts or stoppages. He wasn't one for movers and what would now be considered more defensive fighters, and truly thrived off of fighters who chose to come forward and fight fire with fire. Sullivan would fight anywhere as he truly came of age in an era where a barge, basement, or ballroom could prove equally satisfying as the standard boxing ring. As rough and rugged a boxer as you'll ever see, Sharkey was the epitome of toughness. Smaller for a heavyweight, he made up for that lack of size with true grit and determination. Often referred to as husky, Sharkey wasn't afraid to mix it up with men who heavily outweighed him. In clinches, Sharkey would throw whatever punches available and land them wherever a target was available due to his seek and destroy mentality. Learning his fighting trade as a sailor in the United States Navy, Sharkey was quick out of the gates and went right at his opponents which allowed him to rack up a ton of knockouts in his victories. Sharkey was easy to hit, but made up for the punches taken with the number of punches he himself dished out. Sharkey packed a mean punch for his shorter but stocky frame. Sharkey also talked a big game and called out many opponents to fight, including a rivalry with James J. Corbett. Sharkey gave former world heavyweight champion James J. Jeffries all he could handle in two fights, including a failed bid at the championship in their second fight in which is reported by the Wellsville New York Daily Reporter, on November 4, 1899. During this fight, the indomitable Sharkey suffered a broken nose and two broken ribs, and his left ear swelled to the size of a grapefruit. Sullivan held the world heavyweight title from 1882 to 1892. Some of his more notable opponents are Charlie Mitchell, who he faced under bare knuckle and London prizefighting rules. James J. Corbett to whom he lost his title in 1892. Paddy Ryan his first signature win and another fighter he faced on more than one occasion. Patsy Cardiff for whom he drew with after breaking his left arm. Jake Kilrain, the fighter for which he first won the bare knuckle championship. And Dominic McCaffrey, a contender from his time. Sullivan is also alleged to have participated in around 400 to 500 unofficial fights and or exhibitions for which he won. Sullivan embarked on a tour across America and offered as much as $1,000 to anyone who could last four, three-minute rounds with him in the ring. As he once proclaimed, I can lick any son of a bitch in the room.
Sharkey fought a number of the top heavyweights of his time. He fought in a number of fights with no designated ending, also called fights to the finish. Notable opponents include former world heavyweight champion, the Boilermaker James J. Jeffries, twice, with the second being for the title shot in the only filmed video of Sharkey in action. Former world heavyweight champion, Gentleman Jim James J. Corbett, three times. Former world heavyweight champion Bob Fitzsimmons, twice, being knocked out in the second fight. Hard-hitting Irishman, Peter Marr, twice. Light heavyweight great, Joe Koinsky, twice, who famously knocked out Jack Johnson. And former world heavyweight title challenger, Gus Rulin, twice in losing efforts, both in which the bout was stopped by the referee due to cuts and welling. Style and skill are even. Both men could be considered brawlers and both were the types to come out of the gate charging as they laid into their opponents with an explosive offense. Both men were able to apply their trade on the inside and used roughhouse tactics to control fights. Endurance is even, though one could argue the edge to Sullivan in this regard. Sharkey routinely fought in 20-round fights and Sullivan fought in some of the longest recorded fights in history. Both men showed the capability of going the distance when needed. Chin goes to Sullivan with the slight edge. Sullivan was knocked out once in his career, while well past his formidable fighting prime. Sullivan was able to take it just as he dished and refused to go down when in trouble. Sharkey had a hell of a chin and was knocked for his toughness. He was knocked out on four occasions though there were factors that led to such. Overall, both men have great chins. Power is even as both men packed a punch and racked up a number of knockouts over the course of their careers, bare-knuckle fights included in the case of Sullivan. The slight speed edge goes to Sullivan who was an explosive puncher during his time. Sharkey was the smaller fighter, but not necessarily the fastest as he was able to be hit often and took a number of punches. Resume goes to Sharkey with a slight edge. Sharkey fought the overall better competition and faced guys with tons of fighting experience during his prime, the one common opponent between the two being James J. Corbett. Sullivan did fight some of the top competition during his era, but there were some top-class matchups we never got to see. Intangibles go to Sullivan. Sharkey was a very tough man and battled it out as a sailor where he truly gained and backed his reputation but Sullivan was a trendsetter in the sport of boxing and commanded an entourage everywhere he went as he was essentially larger than life as far as the boxing world was concerned during his time. Both men were true fighters in the truest sense of the word. All things considered, 86 boxing favors the Boston strongboy John L. Sullivan via TKO. Over stiff challenger, Tom Sharkey. Both men come out of the gates blazing as they look to be the aggressor, and get the crowd on their side early. Both men may even taste the canvas due to the blazing offensive arsenal that each will be throwing. Things start to settle a bit more through the middle rounds where Sullivan's size truly comes into the picture, and he starts to take control of the fight. Sharkey continues to take punishment, all while throwing back, leaving little doubt that he's game enough for the challenge. Eventually, the great Sullivan opens up a few cuts and bloodies Sharkey to the point that the referee has no choice but to step in and call off this fight to the finish. Sullivan's hand is raised. Do you see the fight going a different way? Feel free to let us know in the comments. Thank you for tuning in.